In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about Kubernetes ingress. So ingress is how we get in and out of the cluster as far as uh, in a networking perspective. So if we want to make a request that is going to be handled by a Kubernetes cluster, uh, we will be going through some type of ingress into the cluster. So you can see here, we've got some important uh, terminology. We have node, it's a worker machine and part, part of the uh, Kubernetes cluster. And one of the things that we're against is in our demo right here is that we are uh, running on our local machine. So we are a single node, air quotes, cluster. So Kubernetes, when it's deployed, it can be clearly on multiple machines, might even be in multiple data centers. So there's literally thousands, if not more, uh, ways to uh, deploy Kubernetes. So a cluster is going to be a set of nodes. And again, for our purposes, we only have one node in our cluster because we are running on our local machine. If we were running on AWS, we might have a set of servers that we've provisioned for Kubernetes. So th there's just a, a lot, of, lot of different things that we can do as far as how things are going to be deployed. The edge router, again, that's going to be some type of device that could be routing traffic into your Kubernetes cluster. So let's uh, come up here and talk about this. What is ingress? So the client is going to make a HTTP or HTTPS request to a, a host name, some type of a host name and path. And that path is going to be serviced by something. Now, some type of endpoint, that ingress endpoint, that is going to be coming into the cluster. Now, your service and pods, that is all handled by uh, Kubernetes networking layer. So this is kind of like a virtual networking layer that uh, typically we are not going to be interacting with at all. Kubernetes has tools to manage that. And what I want to stress in this video is that there's a lot of different ways that we can skin this as far as how we get into this. And let me come up here. Uh, to ingress controllers. And here we can see uh, some popular ingress controllers for uh, Kubernetes itself. Uh, let's see here. You can see here Kubernetes itself, uh, there are controllers specifically for AWS, uh, Amazon, uh, Google Cloud, and then Nginx. These are all very popular ingress controllers. Again, it's highly dependent on what your environment is. So if you're using AWS, obviously you want, might want to be using AWS load balancers. Likewise for Google Cloud Foundry, uh, might want to do that. Nginx, that could be some type of custom cloud environment. Uh, if you are running your own data center, here we have F5. Um, I don't know a lot about F5, so other than that they are very expensive and they can handle a crazy amount of network traffic. Uh, but the key takeaway that I want you to have here is uh, come back here is coming into this ingress controller here there's going to be a component that is going to be routing traffic into that and we are somewhat limited because we have a single node to emulate that the simplest thing for me to do is showing you that what we are going to be doing is taking spring spring cloud gateway and setting that up as our air quotes ingress controller so i'm going to be setting that up we will be exposing it on a, a port on our node port. So we'll get a random port assigned by Kubernetes that we will be able to go through the Spring Cloud Gateway into our microservices. And I decided to record this as a specific uh, video to allow us to think about the deployment and understand the limitations of running on a single machine and also all the deployment options. A lot of times you will be uh, standing up services and pods behind all this, and the actual ingress is going to be handled by a DevOps team, and you as a developer is really not going to have a lot of control over that. But you need to be aware of that and that they will be routing traffic to that, and you might have. So using our example, your beer service could be running in a cluster of machines on one Kubernetes cluster. Your inventory might be on a completely different Kubernetes cluster, and there might be some type of ingress controller in front of that managing all that. So there's a lot. <laughs> I cannot stress this enough. There's a lot of different ways that we can uh, control that. Here, the takeaway I want you to have is understanding that there's a lot of diversity, and really there's no right answer. There's just a, a lot of a lot of people have opinions. A lot of people are 
have dependencies on the deployment environment that they're in, personal preferences. Here we are going to be mimicking this piece using Spring Cloud Gateway and a service type of a node port. And we'll be setting, looking at that in the next video as we set things up using Spring Cloud Gateway as our, I'm saying this in air quotes, a ingress controller for Kubernetes. And again, there's a lot of different ways that we could do this for the purposes of this class. I felt that uh, Spring Cloud Gateway was probably the simplest approach because it allows us to see a couple things as far as service discovery and whatnot and routing to our services within the Kubernetes cluster, understanding that the Kubernetes cluster is going to be handling all the networking uh, between Spring Cloud Gateway and the actual services and the pods that it's deployed on.